Hey guys, it's Carl. So this is it. This is the very last uh, living room tech tour that you're gonna see in this place. For those that have uh, watched the channel or followed along, you know that I've probably been here, what, four? ish years and if this is the first time that you're watching this video it's perfect as this will be a recap a lot of tech has uh, been changed out some of the tech has actually stayed for all four years and um, the reason why this is the last video uh, of the series I'm actually building a house right now and we're estimating completion to be uh, sometime this year maybe around September October I was actually just on site the other day and they just finished up uh, framing just in the nick of time as it's the middle of the winter right now in Toronto deathly cold today is actually minus 20 20, one of the big reasons why I'm recording this vid, did not want to step outside, so it's a perfect timing. But to the, I guess, tech for my last tour, for this entire living room uh, setup, I would say that the floor plan of this living room in this condo in general. So we're sitting at around 16, 1700 square feet. The main area here is all open concept. So you kind of walk into the place. We've got the kitchen, the, um, I guess, living room slash dining room area on um, one open area and I thought I would switch things up and kind of work this way towards the camera into I guess the grand finale where the TV is and everything because there is quite a bit of tech that spans across uh, here. So behind me right now we actually have a bit of um, another TV setup so that is the Samsung frame. I think it's one of the most obvious pieces of tech but maybe slightly conspicuous because the frame essentially turns into a piece of artwork when the TV is off and generally when you have a blank TV it's just a black box not really too aesthetic and the frame is one of the pieces of tech that I've had for four years now. I got it installed when I moved in and I typically don't watch TV over on this side but sometimes uh, I have friends over sometimes we've got sports playing so I have you know maybe my EPL playing in the background and we've got another game going on the big TV. Very specific use cases most of the time I just have a picture or a piece of art up which you can change but I've just got it pretty uh, stationary on one photo. Kind of moving down from there I just want to intro the uh, sponsor for today's episode which is uh, Marshall so big shout outs to them. They're actually powering the audio experience uh, in this entire place. So this is their new Acton 3 uh, home Bluetooth speaker. It's part of their overall home line of Bluetooth speakers. And why I love this, the overall aesthetic I think fits in perfectly to the modern minimal theme that I've got going on. It's not overly flashy, it's not too big, it's got a great design with the faux leather around the outsides and the gold trimmings I think make it fit perfectly into the space. Since it's a simple plug and play, either via Bluetooth or aux, I think most people will lean to the uh, Bluetooth option. I've just got it paired to my phone and then I can choose the music streaming service of choice. So whether that's Spotify, Apple Music, or uh, through podcasts, whatever I'm listening to. It's got these really nice knurled control knobs. There's always something satisfying about an analog control stick so I can change the volume, treble, bass. The sound output, even though for its size, can cover this entire room. So whether I'm just kind of chilling, editing, listening to music kind of low key, or if I have friends over, I've definitely had a couple of good parties in this place over the years, I can really crank up the volume and I don't need an additional speaker here. It's made out of 70% recycled plastics. And like I said, the design of it, I think just fits in perfectly. I've gotten so many compliments on it. So definitely a Bluetooth speaker for the home worth checking out. And for the rest of the tech on that wall, I just have the Ecobee Smart Home Thermostat. It's my preferred smart thermostat of choice. It's better than the Nest thermostat. It's got a larger display. It's more premium. Once again, I can set uh, different control temperatures when I'm say traveling, when I'm on vacation, that can all uh, regulate the temperature here in the condo. Obviously now that it's uh, so cold, I do have it uh, cranked up quite a bit, but it's super simple. I can control everything off of my phone and kind of moving this way, not really tech related, but maybe my most prized possession. So this uh, plant, I think it's a, a bird of paradise. I got it for my mom as a housewarming gift four and a half years ago. It has grown a lot, looking a little bit brown since uh, I've been traveling. Maybe it needs a bit more water, but definitely coming to the new house. I think it just gives the area, you know, a bit of green, a bit of um, nature. Kind of behind that, just a little light by gantry. And then what you'll see is um, the theme that runs across, not only here uh, at home in every room, but at my studio as well. I just love Lego. I love building out Lego sets. So I've got the good old um, Land Rover Defender. Coming over this way, once again, not tech related, but uh, we have Link's crate that I just keep uh, all of his uh, bully sticks, all of his extra food. He's actually in daycare today, so won't be making an appearance, but maybe I'll snag some bits of B-roll when he's back. Little Manchester United uh, Lego kit. And I guess if you were to look this way, we just have this massive wall of windows, which is really nice. The biggest reason why I got um, 
this place was the little balcony space. So that's almost a thousand square foot balcony. I'm definitely gonna miss it. I can see that link has uh, pooped outside and um, I guess the plus side for it being so cold, it's now a little, it's now almost a little poop popsicle. So I will pick that up. I will say the piece of smart home tech that I do have outside is just a simple um, smart plug because I do have some lighting around the gazebo. You don't wanna go outside to turn that on or off. I'll show a B-roll at night when all the lights are on. You can convert non-smart accessories or non-smart electronics into something smart with just a simple smart plug. So this is the one that I use and recommend. It's by uh, Matter. I've got a bunch of them. It's called uh, Eve Energy. And that plug outside can now link to my smartphone. So from the comfort of inside, I don't have to go into minus 20 weather. I can just turn off uh, those gazebo lights. So super dope. And they're probably the easiest way to get uh, into the um, smart home tech space. So before we move into the main uh, TV space, uh, my dining table here, I usually receive all my tech uh, here, not at my studio, and then I kind of haul them between both places. So this is where uh, tech piles up that I need to test. So on deck, I actually have the uh, 16 inch MacBook Pro with M2 Max chip. I initially had the M2 Pro, needed to make the upgrade to the Max, and I just haven't had the time to uh, transfer my stuff over from my M1. So that's currently on deck, and I just came back from a trip. So um, I was actually just in San Francisco for Galaxy Unpacked. I've got the S23 Ultra here, and my suitcase um, is actually just sitting off to the side behind the tripod. So I have to clean that stuff off. We will now make a change. That's all the tech in this area that I can kind of see. And um, we'll hop on over to uh, this side of the camera where uh, my couch and main TV is. Okay, switching to, I guess, where the meat of the tech lives uh, in my living room setup. Obviously, the first thing that we have to chat about, the TV. The amount of times that I've switched between this, and this is a 4K short throw laser TV. Got it from Hisense, I got it the last World Cup. So not the one that I actually got to go to in Qatar, the one before that. So it's been with me for close to five years. I actually had it in my previous place before I moved out. And I've kind of gone back, tested uh, LG OLEDs, uh, Samsung QLEDs, Sony TVs. I just cannot get over the size of having a 100 inch panel. There's just something so nice about having obviously that huge screen real estate. More so to the fact that I'm willing to uh, sacrifice image quality, obviously with a short throw laser TV, they've gotten way better over the past uh, four or five years. I was just at CES, they do look a lot better, but they still don't give you the same picture quality, the same blacks, the same um, obviously depth as an actual panel does. So not just on sunny days, but just during the daytime, if you have windows, if you have a lot of natural light coming in, the image quality just isn't as deep. But if you can look past that, if you want to have a large image size and obviously 100 inches, I haven't gone to a movie theater in years. I just watch everything from home, from the comfort uh, of my couch. I'm not burning $20 for popcorn. I can eat dinner, I can chill here and have a cinema-like experience on a large display. So that's the reason why I have it. Uh, I'm thinking of sadly leaving it here. I plan on holding on to this place to uh, potentially uh, rent out. So I guess the next person will enjoy it, but it has lived here. High sense, I've used this TV for uh, four years. This and my plant are the two things that I've had the longest uh, in this condo. For my soundbar option, I'm rocking the LG SP11. And the reason why I like it, it comes with these two additional rear speakers, which you can emulate uh, Dolby or surround sound. So I've got them placed on both sides of my couch. I'm kind of in a toss up right now because I just got the new Apple uh, HomePod uh, Gen 2s and you can pair those with the Apple TV as another soundbar option. So I'm kind of testing out both. Obviously uh, the soundbar or the one from LG gives you a bit more depth, but if you're into the Apple ecosystem, if you like a stereo pair of um, say Apple HomePods, it's also another option that's obviously quite a bit cheaper. So for the consoles I mentioned, obviously the Apple uh, 4K TV. I also am rocking the Xbox uh, Series S and maybe one of my favorite pieces of tech is actually um, the new Elite controller, the Gen 2. So you can custom spec this. I've obviously gone with, um, Xbox calls this orange, I would say it's maybe a bit more on the yellow pastel side, but it's uh, probably the best gaming controller. I know that uh, PlayStation just launched their new Edge controller, but by far, Xbox has it down for their controller design. Now uh, they're straight up uh, dope. Obviously I've got uh, Elite 1337 as an engraving and um, yeah, Xbox, you just smashed it um, with this controller. 
Furthermore, on that uh, TV console, obviously uh, a hint of LEGO, so I've got my TIE Fighter. I feel like that entire area is either black or white, so very uh, Stormtrooper look to it. I mentioned my coffee table where my controllers live, and I've just got some uh, little living room books that kind of live off. They just give a bit of a design aesthetic. And uh, further in that corner, I've got a couple things from Dyson. So the first thing is the uh, Dyson uh, floor lamp. The specific name is the Solar Cycle Morph Lamp. It costs close to $1,000. Not that I would ever recommend that. Just super lucky that uh, Dyson sent it out, but it does track the color temperature of when the sun rises, obviously a bit warmer. Into the day, it gets a bit cooler. And at sunset, it goes back into a warm LED color. So a really dope looking lamp. Once again, not anywhere close to near a thousand dollars but uh, dope that I do have it and beside it is something probably a bit more important especially for um, air health so this is one of Dyson's uh, air purifiers this one specifically is a fan hot and cold humidifier formaldehyde cleaner and of course air purifier so if you are someone with a bit of a sensitive uh, respiratory system that needs to kind of clear out all the particulates that flow around especially in a condo because you share all the vents with uh, people in a space there can be some uh, nasty stuff that floats around it. Obviously, if you have pets, I'm lucky that uh, Link doesn't shed, but all the pollen that he brings in, obviously we've got the uh, doors outside. We're in the middle of the city, so a lot of pollutants come in. This thing helps to filter uh, the air that we breathe. So obviously expensive once again, but more worth it uh, on a tech side, I think. And kind of behind the couch before the windows, we have a couple pieces of home tech that I always forget to mention. So we do have some Philips Hue lights. I tend to uh, lean towards my Philips uh, lighting stuff. So those kind of help set the mood at night or if we need some additional uh, lighting. We've also have those uh, Philips Hue lights outside on the balcony as well. This little guy is from Eufy. Once again, really helpful tool for just uh, making the uh, condo a cleaner space, just getting into all the little nooks that uh, crumbs like to fall or Link brings in uh, you know, muddy footprints. We just like to vacuum up. For our larger vacuum, we also have uh, the Dyson. I believe it's the uh, V, what is it? V 12 v13 the latest one detect complete with a little built-in laser so between uh, those two vacuums that's how we um, keep the condo clean and last but not least um, over on this side probably the last piece of tech uh, in the living room we just have a nest hub max so it's the larger nest size hub really only to tell the time maybe i'll ask it um, hey google what's the temperature today So another hub picked it up, which is weird because this one is sitting right here. It's a bit slow. So studio Wi-Fi responded weird because I'm literally talking right to it. So I find this to be a little bit on the buggy side. Once again, mostly just using this to kind of tell the time. And I've just got my keys, uh, my sunglasses, uh, my AirPods just sitting on this little white console. And that is pretty much my tech tour. I think I've covered everything off. My furniture, before I forget, um, I do have a nice match between both uh, Caligaris and Rogue Concepts. I'm super lucky enough to have um, upgraded from my Ikea stuff. When I used to be a student, obviously uh, that was the cheaper end stuff, but as I've built up uh, my career, as I've got a bit more income, I'm able to spend it on some nicer pieces that have once again lasted four and a half years. I couldn't say the same for my Ikea stuff, most of this furniture, unless I decide to rent this place out, will come with me to the new house. And um, that's pretty much been my tech uh, living room tour. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Remember, this is probably my last one of the year until we move into the new house. So when I redo this series sometimes next year, I will um, be in that new spot. So if there's anything that I forgot, I will leave it down below in the comments. If you guys have recommendations, let me know as well. And I hope this video kind of helped you out uh, to map out your own space. You'll get some um, nice little inspiration ideas. And uh, that's what I kind of look for when I watch YouTube so I can um, set up my new spaces. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And I will catch the rest of you in one of my next ones. Peace.